Well, hello, Perry Creek. <laughs> How are you all doing? I hope that this video post finds you doing well. Um, Kelly and I, we're doing great during this crisis, although we are starting to notice all the things around the house that need fixing. <laughs> Other than that, we're fine, except for one thing. We miss our peeps. I, I don't know if it's cool to say that anymore, if it's too outdated, but um, we miss our people. We missed worshiping with you on Sunday. I missed catching you at the door and just hearing what was going on in, in your lives. So we miss you guys. Well, if you read your newsletter last week, then you know that we're going to be sending you a, a little piece of communication every day as we go through this crisis. And today is what we call Transformational Tuesday. <laughs> it's, it's just a day when you and I kind of sit down and have devotions together. So today I thought for our devotion, we would just take a quick look at one of the Psalms. So this is Psalm 121, which is a psalm of ascent. And here's what the writer says. Just listen to these beautiful words and let them kind of wash over you. I lift up my eyes to the hills. <clears throat> Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Now, as I read that, that psalm, some of you may have recognized uh, the first verse of it where it talks about, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? And the place you might have recognized that from is the movie, The Sound of Music. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but near the end of the movie, you know, the Von Trapps go up into the mountains to escape the Nazis. And somebody quotes this verse, you know, I lift up my eyes. My help is going to come from the hills. And then they sing, climb every mountain. I think they might sing it a little better than that. But anyway, and, the, and, and you know, they sing the hills are alive and it's very inspirational, right? So because I think because of the sound of music, I always kind of thought that this is the way the psalm was talking, that this is what it meant, you know, kind of like, yes, the hills, that's where my help is going to come from, like, yippee, the hills, you know. It, it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me when I read it, but for some reason, I always kind of thought that's what it was saying. But a few weeks ago, I, I was really looking at this psalm and thinking about it, and I realized something. That is the opposite of what the writer is saying. <laughs> you know, he's not saying, yippee, the hills, the hills are wonderful. This is a psalm of ascent. You know, the, these were psalms that were written to Jewish pilgrims as they traveled to Jerusalem for big religious festivals, but they're called a psalm of ascent because to get to Jerusalem from any place, you had to climb. Jerusalem is surrounded by hills, you know, and so you had to go on this big trip and the, the hills were not the buddies of the Israelites. They represented challenges, right? So the, the hills surrounded Jerusalem. They were really steep. They took a lot of effort to climb. I'm sure there were narrow spots in the, in the hills, probably some scary spots. I, I'm sure there were other difficulties. There might have been thieves waiting at night to rob uh, pilgrims as they traveled along. So when you read this psalm, you know, we don't see somebody who's saying, yippee, the hills. <laughs> this is actually somebody who has probably started out on their journey. This is at the beginning of the Psalms of Ascent. They're, they're already on the road, but they're looking up as they walk down that road. And as they look up, what they see are these steep, difficult, intimidating hills. You know, they're not there yet. They're not to the hills yet, but they know they're coming. And they're just wondering one thing. How on earth am I going to make it through those hills? 
right? That's the question on their mind. And I, I, I picked this psalm today because I think that's where many of us are with this crisis. You know, let's be honest, we're not in the thick of things yet, right? One or two of us has a, a loved one who is seriously affected right now, but most of us are not personally affected by the crisis right now. You know, m none of us are sick yet, but uh, so we're not in the middle of it. We're not infected. We're not experiencing the sorrow of it. It's more the drama of it right now. But here's the thing. We know that it's coming. Right? It's kind of looming ahead. And so as I think about this psalm and I think about our circumstance today, I just want to ask you one question. What's your hill? You know, what is it that as you look ahead is looming in the distance that's causing you anxiety? Is it loneliness? You know, are you, are you going, how am I going to make it through sort of the psychological turmoil of being isolated? Um, is it, is it, is your hill is maybe your finances, right? Some of you own businesses and you're going, how are we going to make ends meet? Some of you, uh, you know, you, you serve in jobs and you're going, my job is at risk. Or, or you're just wondering, how are we going to make it through this time? Maybe that's it. Uh, maybe some of you are very concerned about how the virus itself is going to affect you or a loved one. Maybe you or somebody that you love is, is, is high risk, either because of what they do or because of who they are. And you're looking and you're going, how on earth am I going to make it through this hill, right? Well, here's the answer that the psalmist gives. You're going to make it through these hills one step at a time with the help of the Lord. One step at a time with the help of the Lord. You know, you can't make it through the hills until you get to the hills. So there's kind of a sense in which we shouldn't really worry too much about it. Um, and here's the thing that the psalmist is saying. When you get to the hills, you're going to find out that the Lord is already there. Right? He's there. Look at what the psalm says. You know, in verses uh, 3 and 4, he says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. And what he's saying is just God's watching over every single step, and he doesn't take time off. In verses uh, 5 and 6, he says, The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. And he's saying God's watching over you, both the dangers of the day and the dangers of the night. God is working in those. He's got this. Then in verses 7 and 8, the psalmist says, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He'll watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. You know, Perry Creek, what this psalm is telling us is simple. It's just saying we serve a really big God, right? He's a God who doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber, and he's watching over us during this time. And I want you to know that, that when we get to the hills, we're going to find that God's already there. If we get a shelter-in-place order, which looks like it might be coming down today, I, I, I don't know, but if it does, we're going to find that God is there. We're going to find him show up in amazing ways, right? If the virus comes heavily to Raleigh, if, if many people fall ill and are affected by this, we're going to find that God is there. You know, if we have to deal with, with the, the virus personally, if we get sick, we're going to find that God is there, right? We can rest because we serve a God that is already in the hills. And we're going to make it through those hills, one step at a time, with God's help. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray today that we would be your church. That we would be what you call us to be. Father, we pray that we would recognize the seriousness of this journey, that we would not ignore the difficulties that are ahead, but Lord, we pray that we would be people of faith, we pray that we would be people who believe that our God is waiting in the hills for us. 
Lord, we pray that we would encourage our fellow travelers. This psalm was a song that was meant to be sung so that others could be encouraged. And so, Lord, help us to be an encouragement. Help us to spread hope and love and joy through you. For it's in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Prairie Creek, we love you. We'll see you Sunday.